Hello. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. I was literally in my art drawer before and I noticed that there was all this artwork for bandits. And I'm like, I don't think I've talked about this. I definitely had a couple vlogs where I was making some of the spreads and I alluded to it, but I don't think I've ever shown it. So let's have a look ski, shall we? This is the drawer that I keep all the final artwork and collateral for like Peter books. That's from Zoom. This is from bandits. So let's see. I, I don't really know what to expect because I haven't opened it and looked at it for a long time. So I don't know how long it's going to take to go through, but I thought it'd be interesting because the spreads that are in the book are not the spreads that I painted a lot of the time. Like a lot of the time, it's a couple of illustrations merged together. This is the book. This came out in 2020, so I don't know why I haven't even thought to do this. This, so I would have already done storyboards. This is just like testing out what colors I could use for each spread. How does it look as like an entire story? With Bandits, the p first part of the story is set in the city where it's like really gray and dark and then the outside world is kind of discovered by like the main character. So I want it to like kind of explode with color. So that's that. This tape just meant that I'd finished the spread. It was like a checklist, but like putting tape all over like a storyboard, I don't know. Let's see what this is. This is draft, so this might be like draft sketches. Can you imagine if it was in this style? Yuck, that's gross. Let's see what's here. This would be like character sketches and that's definitely experimentation. Bart Simpson lol. <laughs> Experimenting with style. I think pre this stage, I didn't have a very stylized character style, if that makes sense. That's clearly with Nate <laughs> writing fluff and stuff. This is the script, let's see what I said. Here's the original first bit. We're not really going through the text that much, but I just feel like it might be cute to see. Before there was anyone, there were trees. Trees peppered the earth, and in some places you could look in every direction. All you could see were trees, but times have changed and things were different now. I had, I had never seen a tree. Oh, was it even in first person narration? By the end, once upon an ordered city where people kept in the cells, there lived a kid named Fern. Fern had no family, but she had lots and lots of books. How interesting. Our story starts in a city much like any other. I had always loved and called it home. The city was ordered, peaceful, and people kept themselves until one day. Fern loved to read about the old times. Back then, you could see trees and animals wherever you looked. The world was covered in them. Can you imagine that? Now people lived in grey houses inside grey cities surrounded by grey brick walls. There were no trees anymore, but things were quiet and clean, and people liked it that way. Huh. It's very different to what I initially imagined. That's weird. Anyway, I was very wordy. I'm always like super wordy in my manuscripts and my editors are always like, Sean, reel it back a little. I'm like, oh yeah, that is too much. Ew, can you imagine? What was I thinking? This is way before like I'd figured out my style for drawing people and I was just doing whatever. But this is the first thing that I had in mind. This is like, this, not this exact image, but an image like this was the first thing that I had shown my publisher to be like, I want to do a story where there's like a, a girl who's got a mask and a raccoon that has a mask. And oh my God, I'll look at all these drafts. Anyway. Let's look at the artwork, that's more exciting to me. If you guys want to look at the drafts, we can go through it, but I just feel like it's not that exciting. But it's nice that I have them. And of course on typewriter, let's look at the final artwork because I feel like that's exciting. This is one of my favorite spreads. This is the spread that I did first. I remember doing this, let's look at this blooming. So when I talk about the fact that Prismacolor blooms, this is what I mean, do you see? It's so different. Let's see what the original scan or like the scan in the end look like. This is the f exactly one of the final pieces of artwork for the book. So it was funny that I did it first. See, look how dark that is, do you see? That would have been how similar it was. That's so weird. But this spread is one of the few that's like the entire spread was painted as it is besides like the digital details. I don't know if you can see that there. I love this page. And then I added, that made this lighter with digital here. Oh my gosh. This is probably the one of the few spreads that's actually the final artwork besides like details, because look, it's actually the artwork. You'll see, oh look, this is actually the artwork too. Well, that one's not. Let's find this spread. I love this one, the colors. I really love this one too. I gotta be careful of these Prisma colors. Like I don't think I can use them in final artwork because of how they bloom like that. Look, and they're on the same page. What's different? This one I've drawn the city in digitally, but other than that, oh, I've, I've made their faces a little bolder. I think that was feedback from the publisher to make their faces less like simple because it didn't actually look like how they looked in some of the other spreads. This one, the apples are drawn on and obviously this yellow background's put in. Why is it this going backwards? I feel like this is how I worked on it too. Now this is interesting. These are some spot illustrations. This was used for, let me just show you, shall I? Oopsie doodle. This is at the start of the book. So this is when Fern discovers the bandit. So these were the photographs and I scanned those in and then like made them into, like superimposed them on paper textures and then like stacked them in Photoshop. Very cute. This was a risograph print. We kept it in a rocket's wallet for two weeks so it looked worn. Risograph print, that's that. 
looks pretty similar. It would have looked more similar at the time. I don't think I did very much editing for this actually. I love that page. Wait, where is it? Oh, that's later. So I must have done like, I think because I had the, this character in all of them, I wanted to be able to do them at the same time so that the, they looked consistent and the colors that I was using and the materials I was using were the same. So that's the, these ones in this, is this page. How weird. I thought that I did way more editing and stuff, but I guess these are like spot illustrations. What have I done here? Literally nothing, guess I'm just perfect. <laughs> I love these illustrations of um, Fig and Bo. I think they're so cute. I love Fig in these. Like, I'm like, whoa. Like, what, if, if I saw that, I would like it if someone else did it. So I'm like, that's the ultimate test. What are these? Possible color tests from before. That's like a scan of my storyboards. This was original photographs that I was gonna use, but I didn't like them, so then I did them again. So this, again, I've done the, the ones that have like fern in them so that the colors can be the same and consistent throughout the book. Oh, that's this page. So that is this page, so it's fully superimposed on a background, which I think I think it's so funny. And my publishers really love this spread. This is just like a fake gridded paper texture and then I drew over in Procreate, but this, all done on Photoshop, like the layers of the photos together. That is there. That is just a texture that I've cut across. That is the illustration over here. And the background is where, maybe in another page, but I've definitely done a background for that. What are these? This. Again, these are like superimposed on paper. And I've used the same background here as I did here, but they're just like different parts of it. And then this character is from here. And then that is there. How interesting. These, these illustrations are all digital on, on like gridded paper texture. And I did this on a cruise. We were in like the emergency, like when they go through like what to do in a case of emergency, I was like drawing these. <laughs> I remember Rocket told me I should put like a mushroom there or something like that. And then what are those from? That might be from this spread. This is so chaotic, but it's as they go. Wh what was that from? I think these were supposed to be for this, but in the end, I didn't like the way they looked and I just drew it on Procreate. I love this spread too. Look at how it's bloomed. I can't use Prismacolor anymore, guys. Cause look, this is what it's supposed to look like. I don't know if I color graded a little, but this, is now lighter than the background. That's not good. Oh, look, that's why I can't use it for like final artwork because it gets lighter. That's really bad. Noted. See, these are my end pages. I did these at Nate's house. Boop, boop. That's so weird. And yes, I'm sure you've noticed the artwork is a lot bigger than the book. And that's just because I wanted there to be more detail in the book than there would be if it was like to scale. This is, I love this spread. I don't love this side, but I, I think this is so bold. I think I might have darkened things in the final artwork digitally, but let's see. Yeah, I definitely darkened her because I wanted it to seem like this was like the thing that you saw first and then you noticed her afterwards, but the bandits didn't want to be found. And before Fern could get a close look, they took off dropping their loot as they fled. And I made these way bluer. So funny, like I, I remember like straining myself over these or like feeling so much pressure. But now when I look at it, the illustrations themselves are quite simple. I wish I just like fully did it. Now this, sorry, this is the creme de la creme. This is one of my favorite spreads of the book. And I like the way that I laid it is something that I don't really do in my work. I painted each layer separately, but the way that it looks afterwards, I think is like the exact desired effect that I wanted. This is the spread where Fig and Bo are escaping the city and Fern is like chasing after them to give them back their loot bag. But this was created by like splitting every layer, splitting the, the underground, splitting all the mountains off and then like layering them together. The silhouettes are split off that I then put back afterwards and then that is done digitally. I love this spread. I think it's like super effective and it also told the story of like what happened, why it's so kind of arid near the city. Like there's, there's dinosaur bones here, then there's like the age where machinery took over and like there's lots of logs, dead trees and then just nothingness. So you can tell like that it's been like this for a while. Like that city has not seen or believed that there's any trees for a long, long time. But anyway, love watercolor. I also wanted to make sure that going across, there was like gray and then it became brighter and more colorful because throughout the book, that's how it is. It's really gray on this side of this spread and it gets really colorful on this side of this spread. Okay, this was that background I was talking about. I did it in black and white and then I just made everything blue. Lucky I'm a whiz with Photoshop, seriously. Like it really helps guys. Like when you think that there's skills you don't need, I have like a lot of my graphic design skills or like skills from when I was a designer and using Photoshop a lot really helped me in like the publishing process. What are these? These are light box sketches that I then light boxed onto the watercolor paper. Oh, this is the cover. So when, I'm, when you work on a kid's book, uh, the cover is like the most important part, I think, 
for your publisher because it's what sells the book. So generally we do, well, both times that I've done picture books, we work on the cover first, get that approved because it's like the thing that will be selling the book, I guess. Is this the cover? Yeah, oh my God. I don't know if this is even interesting for anyone else, but I just feel like so warm, like when I get to see this. I love a watercolor gradient, that's for sure. This is the artwork for the cover. This is what you do first. I've clearly split things off. This part is obviously like the trees in the foreground. That's obviously these guys which I flipped so that they were like moving in the way, like throughout the book, they're moving this way throughout the book. So I wanted them to face that way. These are tests, ignore these, that's just a gradient. This is the gradient that was originally going to just be in the back. So originally it was just gonna be silhouettes of trees, silhouettes of trees and this gradient. But in the end, we took the background from this part of the book and put it in the foreground. And what did I do there then? I think I remember like photoshopping it in a weird way so that it would all fit in nicely and stuff. And this, the blurb is a, like a bill post or something. And look, Mark Martin gave me my little blurb. Sean's vibrant illustration transport the reader to a world full of color and joy. That's what I want for all my illustrations. Anyway, so these, these are the covers and this, these, are, this is the cover artwork. That's it. Isn't that so bizarre? So much happens between making the work and finishing the artwork. These are in separate, these are in separate bags because you deliver everything in like different batches. There's usually three batches, at least there has been for me, per book, not including the cover. So this, I think I actually vlogged working on these because I did it while we're like dog sitting for Maisie. These are these spreads. And this, actually the background is the same. It's just the characters that change because I want it to be kind of like a pause. Like in a, I think I think really cinematically when I'm doing picture books because it's like, I imagine it to be the same thing and then them walking. And I really want it to be like a pause where you see Fern is like really amazed that she's in a forest because she didn't think that trees existed previously. And she's just like, returning the loop, which is what she wanted to do, but like really taking it in. Fig and Bo go from being angry to seeing that like she's trying to help them because the whole time they're running away from her. But yeah, I really wanted this to be like, this spread to have no words and it just be like a massive pause. Then it says here, where are we, Fern asks. Fern asks quietly, this is home, the smaller bandit replied. This forest, Fern was amazed. I think if I was gonna go back, I'd change the color of this, but we can't be saying that, can we? We can't be, what's this on the back? Oh, that's the the line work. Okay, back to the, the boring gray city. I wanted the city to be super, look, that's this spread here. Super boring. I wanted these buildings to look like eyes because I wanted it to be really unsettling. I think feedback from my publisher was that there should be like doors on this side because it's just really weird that for them not to have any doors. And I'm like, yeah, true, true, true. Mostly everything was done. Traditionally, the garbage spilling out and the footprints were done digitally and the extra doors and stuff like that. And then we've got this spread, which is what? This is when she hears the bandits while she's on the rooftop. Yellow gigam, of course. <laughs> Again, like the unsettling faces in the, the houses. The bandits, the dumpster. What have I changed? All I added digitally was maybe some color shifting. Also these details of stripy animals. So I wanted it to be clear that like Fern could recognize or was learning about like striped animals so that eventually she could identify Bo as being a raccoon. Or maybe she was interested, maybe she was researching actually. So there was a poster with a tail, maybe she was researching what that could be. So that you see that she's already curious, she's already inquisitive. She's not only listening to like the, the townspeople being like, they are objectively bad. It's like, well, are they? This spread, this spread, I think some of these colors are a bit garish. I don't know if that's the right word, but they're like so much. I get it because we've we've seen all this like gray and purple and blue. And so suddenly it's like, well, the outside world like has so much to offer. I guess it's very emotive, but it's like the green with the thing really, it couldn't all just be orange or something. Anyway, just roasting my younger self. What have I changed here? I've just put, I think I've drawn this somewhere else. Cause I remember actually physically drawing that. Where is it? Who knows? I've drawn it somewhere else though, I remember. We'll see another time, I guess. So vast. I also like um, like drawing it so big so that you can, sh if you need to, you can shift where it sits in the artwork, in the frame. Uh -huh. Where is this? I don't love looking at the gray spreads, but that's just kind of the point, I guess. It's meant to be like more depressing. So here, I've added color in Photoshop. This is all done like pretty much in gray scale. And then I've added like yellows into the windows and like there to be some, a gradient of warmth in the sky as well. And then obviously superimposing fern into it. I'm not sure where I did that other thing. I think it was on another on another one of the spreads that we already looked at. 
and then this is the end. It's very different to the end. I did those at the same time because I wanted them to be consistent. The end has, I love like a cyclical nature, obviously, like a cycle. Anyway, this is that. Obviously, change it to night. I think because I didn't want it to be like day, night, day, night, day, night. I want it to be the same night. So weird. What were they thinking? And then I've redone these little like plant drops in Procreate or like digitally on my iPad. I wonder where I did that. Where did that mountain go? Ah, oh, here it is. That mountain's there. Wait, did I put it in the back of this or did I forget? I did. So smart. Yay. This is where they meet in the forest, those spreads before. Let's see the size difference. And look, that's them there. Just like separating so that I can play with the scale of the raccoon to make sure that it's consistent. Where is that spread? I actually love bandits. Like there's de definitely things I would change, but like it really holds a special place in my heart, especially in comparison, even in comparison to Zoom. Maybe just because I was older or something. I really love the characters that I created. Where is this? Here. So the first one is this one. There. Boop, boop. The second one is this. Oh wait, there. Whoops, I did the wrong ones. This one is this. Boom, 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 grumpy, grumpy. And then the second one is this, when they've come together, moving through the space. Ah, that is the what I was looking for before. I actually didn't use it though, did I? I literally just re redid it in um, digitally later. That's it. I don't know if this was very exciting, but I think it gives you a better understanding of like the artwork that goes in behind a picture book. I'm always down to share like my process for stuff. So if you guys have any questions, like I'll answer as much as I can in the comments. If you guys want to know about making a picture book, I made a video like three years ago about everything I know about making a picture book and nothing's changed since I haven't made a picture book since, but yeah. It's nice to showcase like the hard work that went into the picture book. Cause when you see the picture book on its own, like I don't think, I don't know, I, maybe I'm being judgmental, but I feel like the everyday person doesn't think about like the amount of work that goes into each picture book, but there is heaps and it's very stressful, but honestly worth it. So yeah, that is the artwork behind Bandits. I just wanna say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. As per usual, you guys know Squarespace is the best. It's the most easy to use, the most beautiful. It's got the best back end. My friend Kat was saying like the back end of Squarespace is a lot better than like what they use at work. And so she's thinking of like migrating the entire website to Squarespace and I'm like, do it. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. If you don't have a website, you should get one. If you do have a website and there's things that bother you, you should try Squarespace. If you want a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com slash very little peach. That's all I have to say. And I hope you like this video and bye.